All right, hello all. I wanted to do a quick video um, to do the transformations of the logarithmic functions. Um, so we covered the basic graphs of the logarithmic functions in class. Um, to get our basic graphs of the log functions, um, we started with the exponential functions and then use the fact that logs are inverse functions of exponentials to figure out what our log functions were. Um, we used points on our exponential and then switched x and y to get our um, logarithm, logarithm graphs. Um, so this on the left side here, um, this log base 2 of x, um, if our base is bigger than 1, we're going to be increasing from left to right. And these guys have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. Uh, the domain of these guys is 0 to infinity, and the range is negative infinity to infinity. Again, those are switched from the exponential graphs um, because of inverse functions. Um, and then over here, the log base one half of x, if our base is a fraction between 0 and 1, our function is going to be decreasing from left to right, um, but we still have that vertical asymptote here at x equals 0. So those are what the basic graphs of logarithms look like. Um, and then what about if we have to transform these guys? Um, again, we should have some programming left from transformations earlier in the semester, and this is going to be very similar to what we just did with exponential functions. Um, so the, the transformations that we can see here is that we might have a negative out front here. Um, if we do have a negative out front, so if, if, if this is negative, then we will reflect our graph up and down over the x-axis. Hopefully we can recall that um, from our previous transformations um, and that will feel very familiar at this point. Um, and then we may have some adding and subtracting inside this logarithm with x. Um, so if um, these guys, if we add or subtract inside with x, this is going to horizontally shift us left and right. Um, if we have x minus h in there, um, this is going to shift us to the right h units. Again, inside with x, these go the opposite way you think it will. So x minus h shifts us right h units. And similarly, if we have x plus plus h, that is going to shift us to the left by h units. And because logarithms have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0, if we shift our, our graph left or right, that vertical asymptote will move with our graph. Um, so I'm just going to make a note here that the vertical asymptote will shift left or right with the graph. So we'll make a note to um, update our vertical asymptote if we shift right or left. And then the last um, transformation that we'll have here is caused by this plus k at the end. Um, we might have a plus k or a minus k out there, but if we add or subtract to the outside of our function, that will shift us up and down vertically. Um, if we have a plus k, that will shift us up k units. Again, if we add to the outside, this will go the way that we think it will. So plus k will shift us up. Um, minus k on the outside, that will shift us down k units. Okay. And then I also just want to remind you again, um, I reminded you with this in the exponential graphs, but I also want to remind you order matters um, for the transformation. And so when you're doing these, the first thing that you're going to do is shift 
left or right. The second thing that you're going to do is the reflections. And the third thing that you're going to do is any shifting up and down the board. Order does matter for your final graph, so we want to make sure we do those in the correct order. All right, so let's practice these ideas with a few examples. Okay, so in each of these, let's um, list the order in which the transformations would be performed. I also want to make a note here of what the basic graph would be. Um, in numbers one, two, three, and four here, notice that the logarithm that would serve as our base or the function that would serve as our base to give us the shape of the graph is y equals log base two of x. Um, because that base is bigger than one, this is going to be increasing from left to right. Okay, so that's gonna be our base graph. Um, that'll be the basic shape of one through four here. And all of these transformations will be done to that base graph. Um, so let's start and list the transformations here that would happen to that graph. I never listed that as the base function, so I'll just label that quick. Okay, so number one here, the transformation that we have is going to come from in here. We are subtracting a two inside with X, so this is going to shift us left and right. Because it's inside with X, this will go the opposite way that we think it will. So we are going to shift this to the right, two units. And because we're shifting this right and left, our vertical asymptote is going to go with that. So I'm just gonna make a note here that our new vertical asymptote is going to be over at X equals two. It will also shift right with our graph. All right, number two here. What if we're subtracting two on the outside instead of inside with X? Since we're outside, now what's going to happen is that that minus two is going to shift us up and down vertically. Um, this is gonna go the way we think it will. So because it's minus two, this will shift us down two units. Shifting up and down does not affect our vertical asymptote, so I don't have to make a note of that. We'll just take our graph and shift it down. All right, number three here. This looks a little different than the way that we've been organizing these before. So to make this make a little more sense with my brain, I'm gonna reorganize this a little bit. And this is gonna be negative log base two of X plus one. That makes it a little bit easier to see exactly what's happening here. This negative in front of the logarithm, that's going to give us a reflection across the line Y equals X. And then we have this plus one out here because it's on the outside, that's going to shift us up one unit. And I need to list these in the order that they would be performed. So the first thing that I'm going to do is reflect up and down over the X axis. And then the second thing that I'm gonna do is shift this up and down. So then I'll shift it up one. Because we don't have any left or right movement, our vertical asymptote will stay exactly where it is, and I don't need to make a note of my new vertical asymptote. And then finally, let's look at number four here. Um, again, our base function is log base two of X. We've got two transformations here. We've got a plus five inside with X and a plus three on the outside. This plus five inside with X, that's going to shift us right and left. Um, because it's plus five, that will shift us to the left. And this plus three on the outside, that's gonna shift us up and down. Because it's positive, that will shift us up three units. Okay, and then let me list these in the order that they would be performed in. The First thing that I'm going to do is the left and right shifting. So I would shift this whole thing to the left by five units. And when I shift to the left, my new vertical asymptote will be X equals negative five. 
that vertical asymptote will go to the left with my graph. And then the second thing that I'm going to do is shift my graph up three units. I don't have any reflections, so I don't have to do that between. I'm just going to shift left five and then up three. OK, so let's use this information to graph log base two of X plus five that whole thing plus three. Um, so this was the last one that we did here. So first we have to figure out what the log base two of X graph would look like. Um, so my base here is going to be log base two of X. And um, we just did this one up here. So log base two of X. That's going to look like this red one here on the left. Um, I'm going to have the point two, one and one zero. I'm going to start with those as the points for my logarithm. Um, if you didn't ha already have those points, then you would just pick some graphs here or pick some X values here. So if I pick X equals um, two, then I would have my Y value is going to be log base two of two. That says two to what power gives me two? And the answer is the first power. So the answer will be one there. So two, one is a point on my graph. And if I plugged in X equals one, then Y is going to be log base two of one. Log base two of one says two to what power gives me one? And the answer is zero because anything to the zero power is one. So that means one zero is a point on my graph. And so I can connect these. This is my base graph of y equals log base two of x. And now we can start doing our transformations. So let me switch colors here. The first thing that I will do is shift this whole thing five units to the left. So I'm going to take each of my points here and shift them three, or sorry, five units to the left. Left five. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five to the left. One, two, three, four, five to the left. And when I do that, my vertical asymptote is going to go with that. So my new vertical asymptote here is X equals negative five here. And I'll fill in that graph because to plot these, Alex is going to want two points and the asymptote. So you'll want to make sure that you make to put that asymptote in. OK, so we have shifted to the left five. And then the last thing that we need to do here is shift this whole thing up three units. So I'll take each of my points and go up one, two, three. This one goes up one, two, three. And this one goes up one, two, three. And that is my new graph. And so I've made both adjustments. So I will put my final graph over here on the green one. That's my new horizontal asymptote at x equals negative five. And I will put my points in. I've got negative three, four, negative four, three. And then I just kind of popped in this last one just to have another point to help me out, but we don't necessarily need that. And that is my final transformed log graph. So I hope this helps you with the logarithm transformations. Um, please let me know if you have any questions as you're finishing your homework.